Hello everybody! We're going to start our third video about the colored pencil techniques down here on the third row. I wanted to show you what you're going to need today. Uh, you're going to um, need to use, I think you're going to need this tape again. You're going to need a pen, some type of gel pen or an old-fashioned ballpoint cheap pen. You're going to need to use your blender. And also there's a pencil, um, an extra pencil called indigo blue. So you need this indigo blue pencil. Uh, your two erasers, if you're using your, your eraser shield, yeah, it comes in handy. That's just like keep it around kind of thing. And then you also need a thin piece of paper. What I have here is a piece of tissue paper. So if your parents have this kind of paper around, usually it's white uh, for wrapping presents with, uh, that would be great. If the thinnest paper you have around the house is just um, just a piece of copy paper, that's fine. You just want a thin piece of paper. So let me get started with our techniques for today. Oh, you also need being pencil sharpening. Um, I'm pulling my pencils out of the box, so here's my regular pencils I have. Our first technique is kind of an odd one, moving everything out of the way here. It's called graffito. And graffito is a way of making kind of a reverse line, which is kind of kind of fun. Let me get a little closer with my camera. There we go. Um, so instead of having lines dark, like here's a typical line in a drawing, this gives you a way of having light lines. And it just has a real unusual look. So you're gonna take your piece of tissue paper I, it doesn't have to be cut in a square, just so you can kind of see what you're doing. I think it's two inches square. And then you're going to take your pen, your ballpoint pen, whatever it has to be, and you're going to draw on the tissue paper. Don't draw on the paper. And you're going to press kind of hard when you're drawing so it kind of makes dents in the paper. So I'm going to draw a leaf. I decided we're getting some fall weather. So I'm going to draw um, some type of a kind of like a maple leaf and I'm trying to push down kind of hard when I draw my lines and then uh, um, let's see I guess that's about it for my drawing I can use lots of colors so you're gonna draw press kind of hard and then you pull this paper off um, if you look down carefully you can see that you've made dents in your paper where the pen was and so what's kind of fun is if you start to draw kind of softly, I'm going to use my orange pencil, um, you'll see that the um, pencil doesn't attach to the paper where those lines are. You have a white line instead of a dark line. You can see that starting to come out. And so since I'm making a fall colored drawing, I'm going to use a couple different um, fall colors here. I'm going to maybe Go around the edges here with my orange a little bit so it stands out contrasts a little bit better and so on so what you can draw you don't have to draw a leaf you could draw a car you could draw don't just draw a happy face that's a little bit too easy but draw a little something you could write your your name and i don't know i love jesus or something like that um, i'm going to add a little bit more color to this Give me a chance to use that yellow who usually doesn't get to come to the party maybe a bit the green and then i'll maybe finish up because see how you're seeing these white lines develop i'm going for a, a fall colors like i said i'm probably going to finish up my drawing with a little bit of brown on the outside. So here's my idea. Pop up that orange a little bit brighter here and there. And then I'm going to use some brown to help around the outside to help that white line stand out a little bit better. And then I can continue to um, do this. I think you I think you have the idea. I wanted to show you some samples you see that white line popping out? I want to show you some samples, things I've done in the past for some classes. You can see here's a flower, you know, all, all white, so reverse lines, a tree, a heart, 
little fish, some different things that I did for samples. So you can see it's kind of a fun technique. It's also like you want to write secret notes to your friend. You can do that. Actually, it dates back to the Renaissance. It's a very Italian sounding word. Um, sure enough, it is Italian. And it's just, a, it's not used all the time, but sometimes you might have a, a difficult thing to do. Or let's say you really are drawing a leaf. And sometimes the lines on the leaves are um, indeed lighter instead of darker. And how do I make that realistic? Well, this is one of your choices. Uh, you could use this graffito technique. So um, I'm just drawing gently where those lines are to help it um, stand out. And then every one of these is its own little composition. So I wanted to the background to look a little more finished. Maybe I'll add some red here next to it as well, little bits of red. it out a little bit better. Okay, so here's my idea for Scraffito. Uh, see how you like it. It's kind of up to you what you draw and some things lend themselves towards that a little bit more than others. Uh, the next time, thing I'm going to do is ribbing. Now ribbing is a lot like, um, let's see, it doesn't matter what color. Oh, I didn't write this down. Um, you can use any color you want, so you, you can, I'll just write down um, plus colors, so it's up to you how many colors you use. On this next one as well is going to be plus colors, not just one color. Uh, with ribbing, instead of crosshatch where you have to pick up your pencil in between every line, with ribbing you go ahead and leave your pencil down and it, and it gives you that overlapping effect. So I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to do something over here on this side. Um, I'm going to put some Obviously, I'm, it doesn't matter what color. I'm just going to draw something that looks a little bit like a scarf right now. And then going ahead and overlapping. And see how it overlaps and then makes a new color. I'm going to do it one more time. Purposely going over the top. So it, um, ribbing is when you on purpose do that zigzaggy thing. I told you not to with hatching, but ribbing is doing it on purpose. And sometimes you get these pretty little areas where you've overlapped colors and, up, and it looks nice. It does give you some texture. Maybe you, you want the texture. I can use ribbing. I'm going to make a real quick little palm tree. I've had um, students use ribbing and make like feathers. It look, makes a really nice looking um, little bird. This is gonna be a palm tree in just a second. Uh, so there's different things where you have a basket. Anything that's like a basket would look nice. Here's my little palm tree. <laughs> and um, just a, a different way of drawing. This is some couple colors here overlapping, like I said, and maybe I have some grass here under the palm tree. So enjoy a little bit of um, drawing with your ribbing and um, see what you come up with. If you don't have anything else to do, it's kind of fun. Palm trees are fun. Draw a piece of cloth like I did. Something like that would be great. So ribbing is doing it on purpose, the zigzag, so you end up with these overlapping interesting lines. Okay, the next one we're going to use two colors for. So uh, I'll write it here. Um, two, they don't have to be opposites, but two colors that are not similar. Uh, please, you don't have to write the words, but since I'm not here in person with you, I'm, I'm putting words on mine, so it, hopefully it's helpful to you. We're going to do three bands of color and we're going to transition them. So I'm going to use um, red and, is this blue? Yes, red and blue. So they're not that similar. Um, I would say don't, you could use opposites. Just don't, um, don't do something like this. Red and orange are too similar, right? 
so something like a red and a blue, they're different enough, they're going to be interesting. And we're going to do this three times. We're going to use variation of pressure. And we're going to transition one color into another color. So we're going to have three bands. And I want them to look as much the same as they can. You know, it takes a couple minutes to get these just right. So three times. Transitioning in. I am using ribbing because it's a just a worksheet, but if this was a bigger area, I'd have to make sure I was hatching instead of ribbing. And kind of soft transition. I want all three to look as much the same as possible because we're doing a little bit of a science experiment again. So nice and dark at this end. Nice and dark, nice and dark. Okay, now at the other side of my drawing, I'm going to transition. And I'm transitioning coming in the opposite direction. So my red is going to kind of fade into blue. So two colors that are not similar is what I asked you to have. So we're going to do this three times and try and get a nice, smooth, kind of even transition. If Obviously, in my case, if you did it well, you would have a purple color in the middle, right? Because red and blue makes purple. So why in the world would I ever want to do this? Well, lots of things especially organic or natural things, do have color transitions. Your skin has color transitions. It's not exactly the same color everywhere. You know, your cheeks are more um, warm looking. You know, your nose tends to be lighter in color and stuff. So we have transitions of color. Um, a peach, an apple, you know, lots of fruit has color that changes a little bit. So you have, you know, your two colors and this is how you would fade them together. By the way, the direction that you draw the lines, um, if you go across like I'm doing with your, uh, with your transition, if you're drawing like this, your transition's not going to work well at all. You want your transition to be kind of a horizontal lines fading into the other color. So like I said, as much as possible, I wanted these three to kind of match each other. Let's see how I'm doing. If I get a line, like I said before, that's too strong, I could just draw on the other side of it. And I think I might make my red just a teensy bit stronger. You can layer one over the other. It doesn't, there's no art police looking at, did you do it right the first time? You can go back and change things. Okay, so we have three transitions of color. In my case, it's red transitioning to blue. The first one we're gonna leave alone. That's just, um, that's just what it kind of looks like naturally. So I'm going to write leave alone. The second one, we're going to take the blender and we're going to add the blender to this transition. Um, and so it's very important, instead of going like this, which is really going to make a mess, it, you have to use the blender drawing in the same direction. Um, and I like to kind of slowly do it, build it up just a little bit. So I'm going to use my, you know, go over it like three times at least. Okay, here we, here's my last time. So I'm blending the one color into the other color. And you'll notice with the blender, it gives you a, a clear kind of bright color, uh, but the only problem is it has been smudged into the paper. So that has a whole different look. Um, to it when you're blending colors. Maybe you like that look better. A lot of people kind of enjoy the blender. We're gonna, one more time, we're gonna go over it. This time we're using the color white. Now the white color is what they used to use for blending before they actually had blenders. So it's been used for as long as there's been colored pencils pretty much. So we're adding the white color on top, same thing, you have to use the same direction as you drew the colors in in the first place. And then I'm gonna um, push pretty hard with this. Actually, I think I like the, I gave you a Prismacolor white. I'm gonna switch to that one. 
um, because I think it's it's a little yeah it's a little bit better of a white. So try that white over the top. Do it at least a couple times so you can push pretty hard. So that's going to have a nice soft blending. It is a little bit smudged in. It's not as transparent. It's kind of pastel looking, but this is going to look more like certain things. Like your skin's probably more of a transparent blend, where um, something like a peach is going to be kind of blended in a more opaque way. So depending on what you're drawing, you could leave alone the blending. You could try adding a blender or you could try adding white on top. Just from what I can tell just now, the Prismacolor white, I gave you guys all one in your bag. It's a little bit better than the Crayola white. And so I'll write the word white here. And I got some residue. I'm going to shake it off because like I said, if you get residue, it's just going to stick somewhere and then you're not going to want that on your paper. Okay, uh, we have another one we're doing, which is called color over color. And to create new colors, we can layer colors. So we're going to start with yellow using three very specific colors. I'm going to try and put this in fast. On top, you're going to use heavy pressure like we did way up here. And down here at the bottom, we're going to have a lighter pressure. Um, sorry, I'm trying not to let this video get too long. So I'm trying to go really fast. You can do a little bit neater job than I'm doing. I'm just trying to rush for the sake of the video. So you have one color that's uh, heavy pressure on top and then on the bottom, light pressure. Always finish, like I said, always finish your heavy pressure with lines going in the same direction. Okay, right on top of that, you're going to layer in a red. Now, your red that's a little bit darker, this red here is better for blending. This red here is better if you just want bright red. It says red-orange on it. So choose the red that says, um, this says red. Okay, now I'm going to make a smaller square right over the top of that square. And then on the top area, I'm again going to use heavy pressure. What this is going to do is it's going to give me some really interesting colors that you couldn't have created any other way. So a red that's been layered with a yellow is going to give me an orangey looking area, right? Because yellow and red do make orange. But up here on top where the heavy pressure is, you can see it's, it's pretty much glowing. So it's pretty intense, this color, this layered color. You, there's nothing else on your paper that's this bright and glows like this. And that's where um, this idea of blending um, colors or layering colors together can be really nice. Uh, one thing about your colored pencils, um, okay, I'm finishing it by going in one direction. And you notice this kind of not cooperating. I don't like the way it's so, you can really see that grid. So I just have to go back and forth, back and forth until I got rid of that that look I created. Um, sorry. So you could see how bright and vivid this color is. Really, really pretty and really interesting. There's kind of a layering, like I said. So if you, um, it looks better when yellow's on the bottom and so on. So you would always try this particular technique on scratch paper first, um, if you're really gonna use it. And then our last um, one, we're going to use the color indigo on top. It says it's one of your extra colors. It's a color that they use. It comes from the country of India originally. It's the color that they use to make your blue jeans blue. And it's a very, very transparent blue. So I'll write it down here. Indigo. So look for the color that specifically says that it's a prisma color. So um, this blue is very transparent and is great for um, doing things like this. So we've added up here on top, we, it's really not a color per se that has a name, but we have, it's a nice clear dark area that's very, very rich. It's not even quite a brown, uh, but uh, because we've layered transparent colors together, it comes out to be a wonderful, dark, interesting, bright color and vivid color even though it's maybe not um, 
I guess add a color that particularly has a name. And now I'm layering indigo down here. And even this lighter color here uh, is still much more interesting than just plain indigo would be in another location. See how this is kind of has a lot of um, richness to it uh, as opposed to this color here. Okay, that's it for this, this video. I hope you enjoyed it.